Good morning, everybody, to another week in this lovely Monday, where we are continuing our discussion on different number systems. And the further we go, the less different they become. Now, hopefully, you watch the video on base five numbers. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure uh, that went as far as converting between the base five and the decimal numbers. So base five number system. Now, really, all we're doing here, we're not actually reinventing the what well, what we did on Thursday. It's still uh, exactly the same as the one hand system. One hand system. Go forward in time to the Devanagari system or symbols. I don't know if I spelled that right. I probably didn't. Go forward in time a little bit and use the 16th century. I don't think they have a name. Symbols. No difference between these at all, other than appearance, really. So if I have, for example, um, what shall we say here? Uh, maybe a hand, two fingers, and uh, maybe three rocks. Then that's a three-place number when I see it in its modern, updated place value version. So I have one hand, two fingers, and three rocks. You could take any symbols you want. We can go and update it to the most modern symbols as they evol evolved. And I just write it the way my uh, handwriting is. One, two, three. But it's good here to emphasize that this is counting groups of five. Actually, it's good to do it here as well. Otherwise, just by looking at the one, two, three, I'm not sure. Is this 123? No, it's not. It is one group of 25 plus two groups of five plus three ones, which is then, of course, 25, 35, 38 in decimal. So, in order to be able to read these numbers correctly and identify what number system I'm in, I'm going to have to use a little subscript to indicate, am I counting in fives or am I counting in tens like the decimal numbers do? But it's important to, to realize that we're not doing anything uh, strange, really. It's still the same one hand system counting in fives underneath. All right. So you've done the converting between decimal and base five. That was done on Friday. Our task then is really with with any of these, we should be able to flip back and forth between any of these versions in history and do arithmetic within this number system. So I'll leave this up and make a new page. And of course, feel free to interrupt if you have any questions. I looked at our schedule again, and we actually have a lot of time. 
uh, this whole week is devoted to finishing up this last part and then we have a little test next week so we are doing our first kind of arithmetic now our goal is the same as before our goal is to stay within the number system regardless of the version it is essentially the same number system but I want to stay within yeah I just want to stay within the same number system well I'll show you what I mean by that if you want to do it with the one hand system or the, the one hand version the original if you want to use the Devanagari symbols if you want to use the modern symbols with the subscript it's all good because it's all the same so uh, instead of exercise well I'll do se exercise 7.4 but I won't do it exactly like this let's go with an a zero what comes before a I don't know before I do the a B and C in the book let's do one with the uh, original one hand system then slowly update it because I have to be able to do addition in all of these and see the differences and see the similarities okay so I'm adding a, a couple of questions at the start of exercise 7.4 which is our addition one so let's say for example we have a hand actually I'm gonna write it all in one line like this so we have a hand we have two fingers and three rocks let's say and we're adding to that maybe another hand maybe four fingers and maybe another three rocks what is our first goal well regardless of how this looks the method for written arithmetic doesn't change and the first thing that method says is line things up so you can keep track of similar things and groupings and all kinds of stuff so I give myself some space so it's kind of similar to Roman I guess if I have to think about what is the closest in terms of spacing lining things up and so on but of course it's not the Roman system I'm counting in groups of five here so let's see how this feels so I'm going to my first column which is the ones column I have three plus three that's six however I am not allowed to draw six rocks I group up five of them and that becomes a finger and I have one left now I move on to my finger column I have one I have three I have seven fingers in total here group up five of them that becomes a hand I have two fingers left and three hands are allowed and there we go so I can do the arithmetic in the original one hand system of course I should be able to So that's our first uh, addition. So here we want to be able to do the addition for all three different faces of the base five number system, which this is the original face, an in between face, and then the most modern symbols. Okay, so that's one that I want to add at the beginning of 7.4. then I guess I'll call this a1 the next one before I get to the book 7.4 where I want to use the Devanagari symbols I'm just making these up um, I don't want to make the same question right um, let's say maybe a, a number oh, let's go no yeah let's go with the zero it's fine maybe something like that maybe uh hmm, let's go my threes never look that good 
Uh, let's go for there and maybe like that. Yeah, there we go. Now, technically, uh, we are not going to use this for anything other than base 5, but technically, these symbols were originally in the history of the decimal system, so do not confuse it uh, with that. We should write a little subscript, I guess, technically, but we can come to the agreement that we're not going to use these symbols for anything other than base 5, so between us, we don't have to write the subscript. But I suppose, technically, you kind of should. So, our method doesn't change. Line things up. Uh, give myself some nice, some space. I want to give myself some space here. So I'm not going to write the subscript every, uh, every time here. Line... Oh, I need to practice my threes. They don't look very good. Eh, something like that. that. Those twos don't look the same, do they? Make it a little fatter. Now it looks like a decimal two. Ah! Anyway, I'm going to go to my ones column. Now I'm still going to keep my language when I say these things in words. Otherwise, it would be too foreign for me. Four plus two is six. Oh, I don't have a six symbol. I am going to carry over one group of five and have one left over. Then I move on to the next column, which is the fives column, groups of five. And I say one plus zero plus four. It's not really what's happening, right? It's one group of five plus zero groups of five plus four groups of five is a certain number of groups of five. But because that is attached to every, every single thing I say in this column, I'm going to stop saying it and understand where I'm at. It's all relative to this column. So 1 plus 4 is 5. I don't have a 5 symbol. It doesn't exist in this number system. I can make one group of 5. Oof, that's too curly. My 1s need work too. Oh, everything needs work. One group of 5 and nothing left over. Because it was just 5 perfectly. And then I go on to the next column. I know this one symbol is horrible. 1 plus 2 plus 3, that is 6. 6 uh, doesn't have a symbol. 6 is 1 group of 5 plus another 1. I'm writing so many 1s, I, I need to practice. And then in the next column, as long as they're consistent, they all look the same, so it's good. I just bring down the 1 in the last column. There's nothing else to add to it. And I have my answer. It's still the same. Still counting in fives. Nothing has changed. All right. Now, do I have space? Eh, sure, I do. I will get to part A. Now all we're doing is updating the symbols to their modern versions. And now I have to give a subscript because they are the same symbols I use for my decimal system. So pros and cons. Pro is at least they're more familiar and I know how to write them, the, the symbols. Con, uh, I don't have, I, I should be careful to not read this as a decimal number. I will never ever say, except for now, 2,410. That is just not this number. It is not the same number system at all. And that's a decimal way of saying this is counting in fives. But my method doesn't change. Line it up, give myself some space. Whoops, that was supposed to be a zero. Always write the subscript or it's not the same number. And I have to subtract, subtract some marks. It's just not the same. There has to be a subscript everywhere now because my symbols are now the same symbols as I use for the decimal system. So I have to distinguish between the two number systems. Zero plus zero, zero. Write my subscript now before I forget to write it. 
Next column is the fives column. One group of five plus three groups of five is four groups of five. Or relative to this column, one plus three is four. Next column, four plus four is eight. I don't have an eight. That doesn't actually exist in this language. But I have a word for it temporarily to help myself, so it's not too foreign. Eight is one group of five and three left over. Next column, one plus two plus two. That's five. I don't have a five symbol. Doesn't exist. It's one group. Oops, sorry. I should do it this way. It's one group of five carried over and zero left behind. Next column only has the one and I'm done. Give yourself a slap on the wrist if you read this as 10,340. It is not. It's 10340 base 5. I don't know what it is in decimal. That is not what I'm supposed to be doing. I am supposed to add the numbers, not convert them. That is a different question. All right. Let's make a new page. Now we, we can totally come back to these. I just want to make sure I cover subtraction and multiplication as well. Uh, I, I think we can squeeze in one more. Because I've added two questions and I'm going to do the same for the others. I want to make sure our time is good. So we have here 110 base 5 plus 4234 base 5. I'm not showing the book. I, you can verify that these are the exercise questions. So I line it up. 1, 1, 0 plus 4234. My five word becomes a little scribble but the idea is there now i'm adding one's column zero plus four is four next column one plus three is four. Oh, this is too easy oh wow this is way too easy i should not even have done this next column one plus two is three next column four wow so best case <laughs> there's nothing to carry over and it's very very straightforward it can sometimes happen. Don't don't always uh, expect the worst. This could happen. And if it does, great. But there could be some carryover as well. I'm just counting in fives. Whatever the number is, is what it is. So I'm going to skip the last one. Feel free to use it as another problem. I just want to make sure I can get through subtraction and multiplication. That said, please check the schedule. Tomorrow is just a Q&A session. Catch up if you need it. Bring your questions. Do whatever you need to do. Oh, that is a bad looking S. So we are taking our time this week because it is the last thing to do before or to finish part three. Uh, no, not part three, part two. For part three, we're not going to start that until after our quiz, so we can focus just on this. There's no overlap like there was last time. So that is nice. So exercise 7.5, uh, A0, uh, I'm going to add some questions before the actual exercise questions. We're doing subtraction. So let's give ourselves a hand. Get it? No? Okay. Uh, let's maybe take a finger. Uh, maybe two rocks. And we're taking away. Let's take away a hand. Uh, I'm not going to take away any fingers. But let's take away three rocks. Actually, no, I'm going to take away a couple of fingers too. Why not? Why not? Make it interesting. And let's take away three rocks. There we go. I'm not going to make this easy. So my method says line it up. I'm going to give myself enough space here. There's the finger column. There are the rock column. I'm taking away a hand. 
a couple of fingers, and three rocks. All right. Now, in the rock column, I have to take away three. Can't be done. I need to go borrow a finger. I'll borrow this finger. As soon as I bring it over, it splits into five rocks. Now, this is a temporary thing that I like to look at. So that is the one exception where I can list a whole bunch of symbols. It's not a number representation for me at this stage. It's just helping me to see how much I have. So the rule of listing five things, I let go for a second. So I have now this five that was brought over plus the two gives me seven in the pink square. Take away three and I have four left. For my final answer, I can't have five in a row. But the pink was temporary, which is why it's pink. So then, of course, this finger is not there anymore. Then I I'm moving on. I just have a yes, question, yes. if that's okay. Yes. Um, I'm just wondering, so on the test, is it okay? Like, if we need to see that, can we um, draw those five um Circles, or should we do that on a separate paper? Like no, anything. That... The way I do it here, it's this is the way you can do it. Okay, okay. Because I want to sounds... see. I just want to help myself remember what I've brought over. It's not in this. It's not in the same way a, a finished representation of a number. It's just a helper for me. So it's okay to just draw a bunch of rocks. I think okay. that's the the easiest way to do it. But no, if I do it like this, I have to lead by example. If I'm doing it like this, then this is how you can do it as well. And I want to see the borrowing happening. But that's the only way I can verify that you're doing it right. Right? It's not just about the answer. You have to show that the method was followed. And borrowing is really the only thing I can show. So I definitely right. want to see stuff like this. Yes. Thank you. So then moving on to the finger column, I now have no fingers. And I need to take away two fingers, so I'm going to have to go borrow. I'm going to borrow this hand. When I move it over, it splits into five fingers. Right? Come on, show the five fingers. There we go. And that hand's not there anymore. So in my finger top position, I have five fingers. I need to take away two. That is easy enough to do, and have three left. Then in the hand column, I clearly have one and left and i'm done so the again just like before we're not reinventing the the method we're not reinventing any steps nothing changes it's really just the appearance and the group size counting in fives so that's one version sort of the original version not that they did arithmetic really uh, at that stage in time but still uh, it's it helps us to mix up the the appearance. Then I know I really understand what is happening. The next one we'll uh, insert at the start of seven point five is our in between step in the symbol progression of the space five uh, number. Uh, let's say we have uh, let's give ourselves enough. Make sure we can do the subtraction. Um, hmm. I need to practice my ones. Let's do that. Take away. Hmm, what should we take away? Maybe. Hmm. Yeah, maybe that. Now, just to emphasize here, uh, we are using this only for base five purposes, just in case some other random person watches this video. Okay, I line it up, nothing changes in my method. I'm just giving myself some space. Take away. I can't really make this look very different from the way I write the two in decimal. Uh, okay, so the ones column. Mm, one, take away two, it's not gonna happen. Let me get my pink out. 
Now, this is my version to help myself, and, and over time I felt that this was maybe the least confusing. I need to go borrow here, right? And I have nothing to borrow. Oh, I have nothing to borrow. So I need to go borrow for the middle column first. Oh, okay, that was blue. So let's go blue. So now I'm going to borrow. I'm just going to borrow one of these four. So they're going to update to three. I'm going to borrow one. That one was technically in the hands column. So what I could do to help myself is maybe see the five fingers. That could help some people. See the five fingers. Because the system doesn't change. It is still the same thing. That's still the finger column. But technically how you represent these five things is up to you. I'll be sort of authentic and use the fingers to match the column and make it look a little bit more familiar. And you can match it then to the previous example we did. However, this isn't the column we're in yet. We are aiming for the ones column. So now at least I have something to borrow. I have something to borrow here. Now I can't write five, right? I have five fingers. I can't write five. There is no symbol for five. If you write a five here, that's immediately minus one mark. Because that's not an allowed symbol in this number system which is why I rather draw some pictures of five things and I just use fingers. Regardless, I have to take one of them over to my ones column and then for my convenience and understanding, I'll just draw the five rocks, which they technically are. That guy's gone now. He's not there anymore. So it's it's the same system, right? It's just the face of that uh, system is, is changing. So I can mix and match to, to help myself. And with the borrowing, uh, I find the simplest is to draw some pictures of stuff. Just like we did for Babylonian. We just drew six, ten symbols. It's not a complete number representation on its own. I think that's okay. So now I have the five that I borrowed plus another one. So I have six here. I can only list them. I don't have a one place representation for six. So I kind of am stuck. Six, take away two is four. I have a symbol for that. Now to the middle column, I have four left. And I take away two. That's two again. Next column, three, take away two, one. And I'm done. So this is my suggestion for the borrowing to draw some pictures. Uh, because once I borrow, I borrow one of that column, which splits into five. But technically in this language, in this system, there is no five. Five is a two-place representation. And I find that more confusing if I do that rather than drawing some symbols and just making five marks however you want to make them. I feel that's a little bit easier. But ultimately it is up to you. If you want to borrow from the blue and write five as one zero, that's totally up to you because that is what it is. And then update that to a four but I feel that that makes people a little less comfortable. So I've switched to this drawing pictures strategy. But there are options for how I want to represent what I've borrowed. Regardless, you, want, you, you should show the borrowing happening because that's a key aspect of the method. Okay. Now, Let's go to our exercise 7.5, number 1A. We got some space. I think we do. Sure, we do. 3, 2, 0, 1, base 5, minus 2, 2, 0, 4, base 5. I think I can squeeze it in here. 3, 2, 
0, 1, 2, 2, 0, 4. There we go. Okay. One's column. One minus four. Nope. Not happening. Need to go borrow. There's nothing to borrow. Need to go borrow for that. Okay, there's something. Let's make it blue. So now I move it. I take one of those. So there's one left. Then that one splits into five. Now I you could use any symbol here. I don't want there to be confusion between a finger and my one. They're going to look way too similar. So maybe you just want to draw five little marks. Just make five little marks. It doesn't matter. Right, if I draw a finger now, it looks too similar to my one. So now I'm going to get confused, and I don't want to confuse myself. So I alter the, the way I represent things, because this isn't a number representation. I just need to keep track of what I've borrowed. I've borrowed five things in this column from the column to the left. How I represent those things, this is temporary. I just want to show something. Then I need to borrow for the ones column. I'm going to borrow that guy. I always borrow just one. That one comes over and splits into five little rocks. Now, there's nothing that looks like the rock symbol, so I'm going to be okay. He's gone now. Now I'm in the ones column, and I have six things minus four is two. I'm in the next column. I have four things minus zero is four. Next column, one minus two. Oh, no. Can't do it. I need to borrow quickly. Let's go with green. That's a dark green. That's not so good. I need to borrow. Let's borrow up there. Again, that is then going to update this 3 to a 2. I always borrow 1. That 1 splits into 5 things. It doesn't actually matter what those things are. I remember their hands, so I want to draw little squares, but it doesn't matter as long as you have five markings. That can be distinguished from anything else. So I have in this column six. Six take away two is four. Two take away two is nothing. And there we go. So that's equal to 4, 4, 2, base 5. How much is that? I have no idea. I don't even care. It's not the question. The question is to apply the written method for subtraction. Now, it looks a little clumsy with all these little markings and symbols and stuff that we're drawing. And it's because we are working in a different number system. That's not as familiar, but it emphasizes what I'm borrowing. I'm borrowing that group size always. How I'm representing that is irrelevant. And maybe in the beginning of little Timmy's subtraction uh, learning, it's good to have those borrowing things that they can count off. Whether they use base blocks or whatever, they'll initially see those things that they're borrowing. It'll just be tens instead of fives. So nothing is changing other than the group size being 5 now. I guess we could squeeze in one more. I don't know if we should. We can do a quick one. And then if it's too fast, then you always have the recording, right? But at least we've done more than one in the modern symbols. All right, so I'm lining it up. Three, one, uh, maybe more space. I hope this isn't a borrowing nightmare. Why do I think it is? One, four, one, four, because it is, yeah, that's okay. Now, 
let's nah, should I leave the, I should use the color color helps zero minus four can't be done let's go borrow I borrow this guy actually he comes over splits into five little rocks perfect five minus four is one write my five before I forget then I'm in the fives column the groups of five column I have nothing I, I have nothing there I should probably write the zero that's what I have I need to take away one can't be done need to borrow I will borrow this one changing that columns value to nothing then borrow I'm just gonna make check marks because my fingers look like ones I don't want to be confused then in that column I have five with the existing zero so just five minus one is four next column zero minus four nope can't do it I need to borrow I borrow one leaving two there how I represent the five that it splits into that's not really important is it it's just the helper for me but in that green rectangle I only have five and I need to take away four so I have a word for five but I don't have a single symbol for five and that's important to to realize and then in the next column two minus one is two is one and I'm done a little quick squeeze one in but once you get the hang of it honestly it's it's always the same whether I'm in Roman Babylonian uh, original one hand system Devanagari symbols modern symbols it's all the same it's the same method and it's the method that you'll be teaching one day you'll just be counting in groups of 10 nothing changes but through this process we're able to really critically look at the method and completely understand every part of it well I hope last one multiplication all right so we have exercise 7.6 I'm gonna add one at the start let's take uh, hmm, let's take a hand let's take two fingers and maybe one rock and we're gonna multiply that by two let's keep it simple our method doesn't change line things up multiply by two it's gonna look a little strange in this one but that's okay method doesn't change and I'm doing this to emphasize the method because if I understand the method I can use any symbols it doesn't matter it doesn't matter at all understanding beats anything else two times one or two copies of this or however you want to say it is two then I don't have any zero symbols here right I'm gonna start in the next finger column doesn't actually even matter two copies of these fingers will be four fingers oh there's not even any carryover ah, next one next one then I'm gonna to move to the hand two copies of whatever I see in the hand column there's two hands this one's a little small then I add things up two fingers whoopsie only four two rocks four fingers two hands okay so that one wasn't very interesting fair enough fair enough let's let's see if we can make it bigger I didn't want the hands and fingers and rocks to get out of hand <laughs> get it <sighs> but let's see maybe something bigger uh, let's go Devanagari symbols hmm it really doesn't matter now does it let's go Ooh, that's a nice three I like that too uh let's go times hmm let's go four why not okay we line it up give ourselves some space to work my three was so nice now it looks so weird struggle to have consistency in these symbols 
All right. Method doesn't change. 4 times 1, 4. Now we're going to move on to the next column. So it's all going to be relative to this column. So the 1's digit is going to be a 0. So I pad it with a 0, so to speak. Because when I say 4 times 3, it's not really 4 times 3. It's 4 times 3 groups of whatever value place I'm in. And 4 times 3 in our language is 12. But of course, there's no 12 here. We're counting in groups of 5. 12 is two groups of five and two left over. Then I'm moving on to the next column, really whatever place that is in, doesn't even matter because it's all going to be relative. When I say four times this place, I really say four times this many groups of whatever this place represents. And it's going to start in the corresponding column. So I'm going to pad it with some zeros there. So four times four, I know I have, in my language, I have 16. But I have to do a small conversion. I'm not going to change my language. I'm not going to change my words. That's going to be too much to ask. Uh, so I can say 16, but I can't write 16. 16 is going to be, whoops, that's a terrible 3, terrible. 3 groups of 5 and 1 left over. Now I'm ready to add. I'm done with that column. Get out of here. 4 for the 1's column. 2, oh, that looks like a decimal 2. For the next column, three for the next column, three for the last column. Method does not change. Does not change. Some people find it easier to work with these symbols because they don't fall into the trap of thinking that it's decimal. I'm not going to look at this and think that I'm working with decimal numbers. It's a it's a visual reminder to count in groups of five for me. But some don't like the symbols at all and want to go back to the modern uh, symbols. Then I just have to remember that these are not decimal numbers. So 7.6, the first one is 3041 base 5 times... Oh, all right, two. And again, we're going to keep it simple to just have a single digit number as our second number. There's no need to make that more complicated. There is some question in the book uh, to get you to think about larger digits, but you don't have to worry about that for the test. So I line it up, three, zero, four, one, if you said 3,041, then slap yourself on the wrist because it is not a thousand number at all. Times two. Two times one, two. Pretty easy. Two times four, well, I'm going to pad it with a zero. Two times four is eight. Yeah, I have a word for that, but there's no symbol, a single symbol for eight. Eight is one group of five and three left over. That was in this column. Now I'm in the next column, pad it with my zeros. Two times zero, oh, zero. <laughs> All right, moving on. That was easy. N next column. I'm going to start in that column, so I'm going to pad it with some zeros. Two times three is six. I have no six symbol. 6 is one group of 5 and one left over. Now I can add 2, 3, 1, 1, 1. That was backwards. So my answer is 1, 1, 1, 3, 2, base 5. The method doesn't change. That's why we're doing all of this. 
because arithmetic is what you're going to be spending the largest portion of your teaching time on, I would say, in terms of math. It is such a big thing and a crucial thing. The methods don't change. Just the appearance. Just the appearance. And if I can flip and flop between different appearances and do them all comfortably, well, then I truly understand the method that's behind it. That is the goal, B. Is B more interesting? I hope so. It's not really more interesting, is it? Maybe I should skip to... I think uh, that's not more interesting either. None of them are interesting. I want to make it as hard as possible. And they all have some small digits in them, making it a little easy, but that's okay. Four, two, zero, base five times three. Three times zero, zero. Then I'm gonna to go to my next column, pad it with a zero to line everything up. Three times two, whoopsie. Three times two is six. There is no six here. 6 is one group of 5 and one left over. Then I'm going to go to my third column, pad it with zeros to help me line things up. Plus, I need to finish the number. I need to pad it with zeros. 3 times 4 again, we've seen this before, is 12. How do I represent 12 in groups of 5? 2 groups of 5, 2 left over, and I'm almost done. Add them up. 0, 1, 3, to rarely is there a carryover in the addition. It can happen. We've seen it in Babylonian numbers, but it doesn't happen often. And there we go. I guess we can squeeze in that last one. Why not? And I have space for it too. Wow. Then I guess we should. 1401. I don't think it's very interesting. In terms of complexity, because of all the ones and zeros, it's going to be pretty small. But nonetheless, it is there, so let us do it. I'm going to multiply by 4, which is the largest single digit I can multiply by, right? So the, the multiplication and the, the arithmetic that I do at any single stage is actually quite simple, because the, the numbers are so small. 4 times 1. 4 then I'm going to go to the next column, pad it with a zero to line it up, four times zero. Oh, wow. Once you get the hang of this, really, uh, I don't. I try and not use the word easy, but it should be easy. Then I'm going to the next going going to go to the next column. That is a wobbly zero. I apologize sincerely. I I should do a better job. I'm sorry. 4 times 4, 16. Uh, how do I represent 16? 16 is a decimal word. It is 3 groups of 5 and 1 left over. Then I'm going to go to my last column, pad it with 0 so everything is lined up. 4 times 1, 4. Yay, I get some more interesting addition. Barely. In the ones column, <clears throat> in the ones column I have a 4. Next column, I have a zero. <clears throat> Get all choked up as soon as I'm going to carry over. One plus zero is one. <clears throat> what is happening to my voice? Three plus four is seven. So that is one group of five and two left over. And the one comes down. That was so beautiful. Finally, it's rare, but a little carryover can happen. And there we go, base 5, in all its versions, arithmetic. Please remember to click the like button if you enjoyed the video, and to subscribe if you want to be notified of more videos. Thank you.